Why, hello, hello, my friends. This is part two of the video about the Crookes radiometer. And in the last one, I implied that it is a perpetual motion machine. But actually, there's a more, shall we say, celestial explanation. Uh, now, you know, you've got the white side and the black side. And... The black side of the vein, as you can see, it is more likely to absorb sunlight and that's solar radiation and that is literally radiation, energy coming from the sun and it radiates through space and it heats up the black side more than it heats up the white side. This is because darker colors absorb more light along the electromagnetic spectrum. And that energy gets re-emitted in the form of infrared radiation, or heat. And it heats the gas within the bulb, which is a partial vacuum. Now, why does it need to be a partial vacuum? Because if it was a full vacuum, the air pressure in there would be too much for the veins to spin. As you can see, the veins are not affected by the wind around them. But if there wasn't any gas in there, then the thermal effect wouldn't cause it to spin when it goes into the sunlight which is what we're observing right now. And so why does it spin? Well, remember, you have that aforementioned gas, perfect amount of gas within that partial vacuum, and then the black surface gets hotter than the white surface and causes that gas to expand, and that pushes the black surface away, and it causes it to spin. And that's your Crookes radiometer in action. And as I asked, what is it measuring a radiometer? It's measuring the sun's radiation. If it's not enough, it won't spin. And there you go. In a nutshell, Crookes radiometer.